This week, the state's bill backlog sits at above $11.3 billion, the worst it's ever been, and nearly twice as much as when Governor Rauner took office. It's become the norm in Illinois. Outspending the revenue that comes in has created a months-long backlog of bills. Currently, there's a line of more than 161,000 vouchers waiting to be paid. I don't want any Illinois resident having to come up with thousands of dollars that they don't have in such a terrible economic climate because we're not fulfilling our job of paying the state's bills. The dire situation's nothing new. Now Governor Rauner finds himself again delivering a budget address without a budget already on the books. So let's update how we got here. On January 1st, the stopgap budget that was negotiated last summer expired. Both sides of the aisle admitted the six-month piecemeal plan wasn't perfect, but it did fund K-12 schools for an entire year, and it did signal some bipartisan compromise, however small and short-lived. Our job is not done, so I don't want to pat ourselves on the back too hard. Um, this is only a stopgap budget. The majority of the state spending will continue thanks to court orders and consent decrees, but that expiration on January 1st signaled the end of funding for public universities and social service programs. Behind closed doors, work in the Senate has generated buzz in the past month as President John Cullerton and Minority Leader Christine Redonio unveiled the framework of what's being called the Senate's Grand Bargain, a package of 12 bills that are tied together, calling for a combination of reforms, revenue, and a budget. Almost everyone who's been involved in this knows it's incredibly complicated, and the more you try to refine it, the more issues pop up. To reiterate, the problems we face are not going to disappear. In fact, they're going to get more difficult every day. That plan continues to evolve. Three of the 12 bills passed last week, but a pension bill was voted down 18 to 29. Ten Republican senators voted present in protest. If the leaders can't modify that bill and get it approved, the entire grand bargain would fail. In the House, Speaker Michael Madigan unveiled his new economic agenda that many saw as a direct challenge to Governor Rauner's turnaround agenda. The House Democrats' economic agenda lays out how Madigan plans to strengthen the economy and the middle class. We can lift up the middle class, provide good jobs for working families, while also passing policies that help business grow and expand our economy. Now, as mentioned earlier, the majority of state spending continues despite the dismal state of the state. And since there are few pressure points to force the issue, the budget impasse wears on. But at the end of January, Attorney General Lisa Madigan filed documents that could force a change in a hurry. Madigan filed a motion to stop state worker pay until a full spending plan is approved. Lawmakers largely denounced Lisa Madigan's move, saying it threatened not just state workers, but the compromise the Senate was negotiating. My fear is that because of her action this week, it will derail very real um, conversations. But many outside state governments say cutting off state worker pay is the right move to force movement on a full budget. The partisan fighting continued after the governor's state of the state address three weeks ago. Republicans praised the governor for calling for continued bipartisanship, but Democrats hammered him for failing to lead. President Cullerton, Leader Rodonio, Speaker Madigan, Leader Durkin, we all agree that we must have a truly balanced budget and we must make changes to our broken system to return our state to a path of prosperity. We need to start realizing that as elected officials, we are here to serve them and I'd like to be able to do my job. I, I really would just ask the governor to do his job and introduce a balanced budget. We're going on year three. Tomorrow, Governor Rauner will deliver his third budget address to the General Assembly. Insiders say it'll be similar to last year's address when the governor gave lawmakers two options, either present him with a balanced budget or grant him the power to make cuts necessary to balance the budget. The budget address is scheduled to begin at noon. We'll be there to bring it live for you right here on News Channel 20.